Hi everyone. Hey, let's take a few minutes and talk about a very fast way to solve some math problems. It's called dimensional analysis or unit conversion. Here's an example. Um, how many seconds are in one hour? Okay, um, when we talk about unit conversion, we're talking about converting the units of hours to the units of seconds. Units are just fancy terms to describe how we're measuring something. So the units for temperature could be Fahrenheit or Celsius or centigrade. Um, units for volume might be liters or gallons. Okay, here we're talking about time, measuring time either in hours or seconds, and we want to convert from the unit of hours to the units of seconds. Okay, enough about the problem. What's the answer? Here, take a minute, pause the recording, and see if you can figure it out. Okay, did anyone say 3,600? 3,600 seconds equals one hour. Here, and those are my abbreviations for seconds and hours. And um, how might I got that? Well, hopefully some of you saw that. There are 60 seconds in one minute. And there are 60 minutes in one hour. So you just multiply it 60 times 60 to get 3,600. And that's the answer. And when we specify a science problem, or a science measurement rather, we should specify the units. It's really not enough to say the answer is 3,600. You really have to tell the reader what kind of measurement you're making. We're measuring uh, we're making a measurement in time, and so the answer is 3,600 seconds. Well, if you didn't get that answer, that's okay. Um, if you did, great. You still may benefit from this method. Here's the method as I want to show you how to do it. It involves three steps. Uh, the first two steps are really questions. Um, step one, what do we want? And that's where you find the unit needed. Step two is, what are we given? That's when you reread the question, and you're really looking for a number some digits. And then step three, you need to find some conversion factors and cancel out the units you don't want and change them into the units you do want. Talk a little bit more about cross-canceling. Cross-canceling, let's say you have to multiply 8 21sts, that fraction, times 7 eighths. And that looks like an ugly math problem, I know. The long way is where you take 8 and 7, multiply them together to get 56. And then 21 times 8 is ugh, not something we had to memorize in school, but 8 times 1 is 8. Um, 8 times 2 is 16. And then we have to simplify that. Yeah. Okay, that's the long way to do it. Here's a shortcut. Cross-canceling. What you do is you look at the diagonal. Here, 8 and 8. And in this case, they're the same. Um, and so what you can do is just cancel them out. This 8 takes out that 8. Right? And what the mathematician would say is that 8 divided by 8 is equal to 1. And anything times 1 is itself. So that's why you can cancel them out. Um, some of you may have also noticed that 7 and 21 are factors. So that's another way you can cancel out. But really for dimensional analysis, you're looking at identical terms. The 8 and the 8. So you either can say, um, well, the 8 and 8 can cancel out. we got 7 divided by 21, that's the answer. Or you can take the other shortcut and say 7 divided by 7 is 1, 21 divided by 7 is 3, and the answer really is 1 -third. And that's what this up here is going to change into. It's going to change into 1 -third. You can use your calculator to prove that. Okay, so we're pretending we don't know the answer is 3,600. How do we get that answer? Step one, what do we want? We want seconds. That's finding the unit we need. Abbreviate that unit and put it over here in your workspace, over on the right-hand side. So we want seconds. That's the unit we need. And then leave a space for the answer. Here's my space for the answer. You put a little equal sign and a long line. And you might find that in some problems, you need a longer line than that. Okay, step two, what are we given? That's where we find a number. Okay, well, the only digit in the question is the number one. That must be it. Yeah, I like this method. 
So grab that unit, sorry, grab that number with its unit, which is hour, and right over here in the top left. So I'm going to abbreviate hour as HR. And we got the number one right next to it. Okay, then what I like to do is kind of break this up. I'm going to put a line here to divide what I start with and what I end up with on the, on the right. Okay, uh, step three here. I use conversion factors to cancel out the units. Okay, we saw earlier that 60 seconds equals one minute, 60 minutes equals an hour. And what you need to do is change these little equations into fractions. Yeah, I know. If you don't like fractions, I'm sorry. It's not too bad. Um, just put one number on top of the other. And if you don't see the answer immediately, try both ways. So put 60 minutes over one hour, or put one hour over 60 minutes. Do the same thing with the other conversion factor, meaning 60 seconds over a minute, or we need one, there, come on, there we go, one minute over 60 seconds. Okay, those are our conversion factors. And, you know, maybe in some more difficult problems, the conversion factors might be, may not be obvious. So then you have to look around on the exam. They should be given to you somewhere, some conversion factors. Or your instructor will tell you that you have to memorize certain conversion factors. Time to get rid of hours. We don't want that. We want seconds. So how do we cancel out the hours? Well, you need it in the diagonal. So we need hour down here so we can cancel it out, just like we canceled out those eights. So in this area right in here, we need some fraction. It's going to be at least one of these four fractions that has hours in the bottom. That's this one. So copy this number, this fraction over here. We've got 60 minutes and one hour. And that's our first conversion factor. Um, the, the hour, the units of hours, cancel out this unit. And now our math problem is 1 times 60 divided by 1. And that changes 1 hour into minutes. But we're not done yet, right? We need to cancel out minutes and still change them into seconds. Okay, so then over here in this cell, this area, right in here, we need to put minutes on the bottom. So now you're looking for a conversion factor that has minutes in it. There's one here, and there's another one over here. So which one do we want to use? We want to use the one on the left. That's because it has seconds on top. And those are the seconds we need for our answer. The other one over here is hours. Um, that's not going to be helpful. It's going to change minutes back into hours. We're trying to get out of hours and into seconds. So. Grab this conversion factor, put it up in there. 60 seconds is equal to one minute. Stop it. There we go. The minutes cancel out. And we got the units we need. Seconds. Okay, so now it's time to get our calculator out. And on our calculator, we would go 1 times 60 times 60. And on the bottom, we do 1 times 1, right? Sorry, told you there's some math here. You got fractions. But just multiply across um, the top and multiply across the, the bottom. Get your answers. 1 times 60 times 60 is the 3,600. And 1 times 1 is 1. And then finally, 3,600 divided by 1 is, well, 3,600. And that's what we saw before. Okay. Let's try a different problem. And we use the same method. So the question is, how many milligrams are in 160 pounds? And I gave you two conversion factors here, changing grams and milligrams, and pounds, LB is the abbreviation for pounds, into grams. So why don't you pause this recording and see if you can get the answer. Okay, this is how I would solve the problem. Um, question one, what do I want? I want milligrams. So, put milligrams way over here, mg, put space for the answer, equal sign on line. Okay, what am I given? Looking for some digits, there they are, 160, they go over here, 
160 and carry the units with it. 760 pounds. That'll be abbreviation for pounds. Okay, um, that was step two. Step three, cancel out the units. Okay, we want to get rid of the pounds. So I need pounds on the bottom. I didn't make my fractions yet, so I'm just going to make them on the fly. Um, here's my equation, and I want LB on the bottom. So put the one LB on the bottom so it'll cancel out. And then put the 453.6 grams up on top. Cool. Okay, not done yet. Got the units of grams now that need to be canceled out. And I need to change them in the milligrams. Okay, time for the second conversion factor. I want the gram to cancel out. Put the 1G down the bottom. And put the 1000 MG up on top. Made my fraction here. And now we can cancel out the grams. Awesome. Okay, that's pretty much it. Last thing to do is grab your calculator. Take 160 times 453.6 times 1000 get an answer and divide that by 1 times 1 which is 1 right so the top all multiplies out to I got 72 million five hundred seventy six thousand and you can talk to your instructor about how you may or may not be able to round that off that's the answer Thanks for watching.